Okay, so there is a question. Now let's look at the solution. I have to convert all my distances to meter. And what is the reason behind that? You define moment and have a unit as Newton meter. So you have to divide by 100 so you, you get a meter. If not, the units for your moments will be Newton centimeter. But you yourself said Newton, uh, moment is Newton meter. So the distance should be in meter because we are working in standards. So that is it. So you convert all 35 centimeters, that is 0.35 meter. X ray, 50 centimeter, that is 0.5 meter. X4, 20 centimeter, that is 0.2 meter. Okay. So from the principle of moment, from the principle of moment, It states the sum of the clockwise moment must be equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moment uh, about the same point. Anti-clockwise. Okay. Now let's look at our clockwise moments from our drawing here. So this is clockwise and this is anti-clockwise. So clockwise, I move my force F1 by the distance. So F1 by X1, that is it. Good. I move another force on the, on, the, on the way, that's F2. And if I'm moving in this direction, F2 cannot follow this course. Because if F2 follow a course here, there is no perpendicular distance to this line of action for F2. It means F2 is a force but there's no moment in the clockwise direction. That is it. So, it's this way, and I mean this one. Now, if this man should go this way, it will favor my clockwise. Even if this man should decide to move this way, no, it's not going to favor us. You see, there is no perpendicular distance to the line of action here. So, you see the way we had it? So here, let me pick this to the line of action. That is how come we have F3, X3. Now, anti-clockwise, let's go. F2, force distance 35. Which force do you meet? Yes, you meet 30. It's not, uh, it's not anti-clockwise. If it should go this way, there is no distance yet in the line of action. So, is this. Let's see, you see, it is favoring its anti. Because there's a distance here, good. So that is what you guys have been struggling with over the years. That's all. So simple. Understand the definition of moment and understand why something is not qualified to be clockwise or anti-clockwise. Your case is solved. That is all. So F1, 30 by 0 0.25. F3, that is 40 by 0 0.5. F2, F2, I don't know, X2, 0 0.35, F4, 50 times 0 0.12, good, that is it. So we have to calculate the left and calculate what we see on the what, on the right. So 30 by 0 0.25, you are going to get 7.5 here plus 40 by 0 0.5, that is half of 40, you are going to get 20, that is for the left. Now let's go to the right, that is F2 by this, that will give me 0 0.35 F2, now 50 times 0 0.2, that is 50, 50, 50 which force, okay, F4 50 by 0 0.2, what are you going to get there? 10. So 0 0.35 plus 10. You are going to get 3.5, right? 3.5 F2. 
7.5 plus 20. That is 27.5. So when you divide through by 3.5, You are going to get your force. That is 7.86. It's a force. So this is the units. Newton. Good. So that is it. That is it. Very easy. So you remember uh, principle of movement, sum of clockwise movement, you got sum of anti-clockwise. The problem is the movement. All the students can attest to that fact. Now you know how to move. And why something is not considered to be in a clockwise direction or anti, although it is in your path. So that is it. Now we'll pick a question with a double pivot or double fulcrum. And let's see how we can pick moment. Okay, so there's a next question that we want to look at. So let's read through the question as usual. And this question has no drawing, meaning we have to provide our own drawing here. Good. A uniform beam 6 meter long and weights 5 kg rest on support A and B. Place left and right 1 meter from each end of the beam. Weight of mass 20 kg and 50 kg are placed near A and B respectively. One on each end of the beam. Calculate the reactions at A and B. Please, reaction is a force. Take note. Reaction is a force. Good. So solution to this problem. So we, we, we draw our uniform beam. Let me put it this way. Draw uniform beam here. Good. So a uniform beam rests six meter long, right? So the total length here, let me get it first. That is six meter. Good. Can you see the way the drawing is going? That's the first step. And weight, 5 kg rest on support A and B. It means you have to get the reactions for A and B, as usual. So this is RA, reaction at A. Here, B. RB, reaction at B. Good. So, if you think that is difficult, no, it is not. So we have that. Now let's see. And weight 5 kg rest on support A and B. Please, if 5 kg is to be resting on support A and B, that 5 kg happens to be a weight, and it is here. So that is a weight, 5 kg. So 5 kg, so it means 5 kg by 10. That is acceleration due to gravity, right? Good. This will give you 50 Newton. Good. That is the way that I'm going to use. So in this question, take J to be 10 meter per second square. So if they say 5 kg rest on support A and B, that is the weight. It means the A and B is holding 5 kg. That is the meaning. Good. And here, left and right, 1 meter from each end of the beam. Right? From each end. Meaning from here. This, starts, this, this part of the beam to this part is one meter. Now, this part to this part also is one meter. Good. I have it. If this is one, that is one. Then the total from here is four. Please, I hope you are getting it. You see, that the sum total of the beam is six. I have one from each end, one from each end. So, left is four. 1 plus 4 plus 1 will give you 6 total length. Good. And this is weight. It is right in the middle here. So even if you want to patch up, you can just get a short distance here as what? 2 meter. Look at it well. There is also 2 meter. Good. Please, I hope you are seeing it. So that is it. Now, weight of mass 20 kg and 50 kg are placed near A and B. You see, near A and B respectively, meaning A came first before B. So the 20 will be here. 20 kilograms, right? So this will give you 20 times 10. That will give you 200 watt Newton. Good. Because see, 
we are working with forces. Kilogram is not a force, it's a mass. So you need to multiply this mass by the gravity to get the force. Here, 15. That's 15 kilograms. So this will give me 15 times what? 10. That will produce 150 watt Newton. Good. So take note. This is a mass. The mass by the gravity will give you the force. We are dealing with forces, not masses here, please. That is why we have to convert all of them. So these are the forces that I'm going to use. Good. And these are the reactions. Why do we call reaction a force? If something holds you up like this, there's a tension in it, right? It's a reaction, it's a force. You can, you, you, as you can see, something holds you. At least there should be some force holding it. The reactions are all forces. Now let's look at the principle of movement. Good. So, from the principle of movement, Sum of clockwise moments. 